What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Caveman Mods. Today, I'm going to kind of show you a little bit of what we've done to this truck. It's been quite a while since I put a video out there and for that I kind of apologize. You know, it's been a, a hectic winter and cold and you know, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of things didn't really pan out the way I thought. You know, I've switched up jobs a couple times. My money ain't been right, so uh, hadn't really worked out for the best for me in some cases. But, you know, I'm back on track now. Uh, but we have got a lot accomplished to this truck, so, you know. Uh, I'm going to kind of go in here and show you a little bit of some of the things we've done, some of what's to come. Uh, you know, I ain't put any videos out simply because just really haven't had any good content and i'm trying to really hammer on this and get a lot of stuff done so without further ado i'm gonna try to show you some of the things that's coming on this truck here soon uh and i guess we'll get started here with some of the wiring no particular i guess uh thing that's going to go along with this video you know there's no nothing in specific it's going to be with this video it's kind of going to be all over the place like a lot of my other videos so stick around and and we'll get to it so thank you do me a favor like share subscribe comment all that good stuff hit that notification bell so whenever i upload a video you'll be notified stick around we'll start out here with all the wiring uh you noticed i got my dash finished for the most part anyways it still needs to be painted obviously but yeah, I got it all sanded down. Uh, there may be one or two little spots here and there that still need to be gone over, but for the most part, it's finished. Uh, wiring is basically done. I've got you know, a couple wires that I've added. Uh, it's been a bit of a pain in the neck trying to get all this wiring finished, but I got it all done for the most part, figured out there may be like two or three more wires I gotta go through and add. Uh, but everything that's here is completed. So uh, I'm not even going to go through and show you that, that tangled up mess right there. But uh, I haven't really put the interior in here yet. I've got all the wires ran for my stereo system. It's 14 gauge oxygen free copper sky high car audio. Uh, I got all my RCAs ran up here. Got my RCAs down here for uh, my bass knob. It's massive there's a mess right here sorry i'm working out of here right now but uh yeah these are gonna be for my base knob uh hadn't really done a whole lot back here in the back it's still a mess but i got all my wires ran for oh here i'll show you right here first that's gonna get cleaned up before i put any of this uh, styrofoam on there but got all my wires and everything ran down through there for all my stereo system. Got another set of RCAs I'm going to run, but that's for video. Because I'm going to mount a TV back here, smart TV. Not on that wall in particular, probably on that wall over that vent right there. Uh, it's going to be a smart TV, so when I cast my phone to that TV, it's going to shoot video up and play to my double-den head unit, which then will you know go through the entire stereo system and basically be like my my uh tvs and surround sound but so i've got all the wires ran back up in there for my six and a halves same up here in these corners up there and over here same over here all my wires ran up and through here uh, see, I got my my uh, CB antenna ran. It's all through the wire or through the uh, mirror brackets. Yes, I got my mirror brackets back on. I don't recall if I ever showed you guys that, but got them flipped upside down. They are going to get cleaned up a little bit more where they're shiny. But I got them on. Got some heat shrink over here to cover this hole. That way, I'm not leaking a bunch of water. It's going to go down inside of the cab over there. Got these lights put on. I don't recall if I ever showed that to you. Uh, still got some wiring under the hood to finish up. Hold on a second. Let me get this hood up. All right. Still got some wiring under the hood to finish up, but 
the most part this whole mess of wires is finished up uh, this basically right here is the only jumble of wires I got to get finished uh, some of these are my gauges which you see I already got them marked I just got to get them all hooked up uh, this goes to my AC compressor uh, this is for my underglow actually this is for the blue light that's going to be here inside of my air vent which uh, the light I ended up putting in there didn't work out the best so that's why that's in there uh, but I'll get that taken back out uh, matter of fact I didn't even put the light back in there I just put the air vent back or the cap back on but yeah so this wire right here goes to the blue light that's going to be in here I got my underglow on both sides uh, and you'll notice we got this whole strip put on here I actually bought this from my boss I gotta get these holes filled not a big deal I got this from my boss from my last job which like I said I've switched jobs a couple times so that's neither here nor there but yeah I got it from him paid a hundred bucks for both sets you know this back one this front one on both sides and of course none of the lights worked I think three out of 14 lights I think it's on what's on here yeah seven on each side so yeah there's 14 lights anyways not on work so I got on eBay bought these uh, of course they come from China so let's hope they didn't come with the coronavirus anyways I still gotta get this cleaned up a little bit but uh, I got my air horn all hooked up now this line's not hooked up to that line sorry I'm down here that right there is my valve I don't have this line hooked up yet because we have to go up through the floor with it now I'm gonna get the interior put in before I run it but I still need to get this truck cleaned up you know there's a, a bunch of uh, dirt and debris and stuff all over it but we got this all cleaned up back here for the most part eh, set that up there but yeah I'm just throwing some spray paint on it for the time being nothing spectacular just trying to get it somewhat reasonably looking uh, see this is my underglow this is what I got left of it right here and you see that shiny diamond plate so since we're back here I'll go ahead and show you I got my deck plate on well before I show you the deck plate or the catwalk whatever you want to call it got these fenders put on here not bad looking also got them off of eBay they're like 130 bucks not too bad uh, I got the catwalk put on looks good my pogo stick a lot of excess line on there but that's fine I can deal with it I'm gonna put a, a headache rack because I'm doing flatbed work now so we're gonna get a headache rack on here and it's just gonna sit right on top of that I'm probably gonna get a box one of the ones that's a box you know it should come to about right in here this area granted this is kind of gonna be in the way so whenever I go to get in the middle door I'm just gonna have to move the pogo stick out of the way not a big deal I've still yet to put tires on it that's coming whenever I get ready to start running it not worried about that uh, got this figured out back here didn't really mess with it too much um, I got this wire jumped for the time being because that's what actually made one of my other lights work the only one that wasn't working but I'll get that fixed soon enough not a big deal uh, let's see fender on this side of course you know, it's got pollen all over it so it looks like crap already but that's what I got going on with the outside the exterior of the truck for the time being uh, let's see let's go over here and well, I'll flip you around real quick so I'll take you guys in my garage still a mess as always um, so the door panels I originally intended on using they were uh, three quarter inch plywood, birch plywood, and well, see, I got them up there, and uh, they ended up not really working out the way I intended. Uh, one, the bolt holes that I put in the doors for, or the uh, rib nuts I put in the doors, they didn't quite line up 100% with those, and oh, sorry about that. They didn't quite line up 100%. So what I ended up doing was I uh, went and got a sheet of diamond plate. Actually got lucky. I had this sheet of diamond plate given to me. 
got really lucky on that so uh what i'm doing now is yeah i told you i'm all over the place sorry about that but this is my new door panel a little bit different from what uh what you guys are used to saying so hold on i'll get you flipped around here and you can see what i got going on that's my new door panel diamond plate door panels uh, doing away with that that big metal piece that goes straight across here that mounts the uh, door handle to it's just going to be straight up on this uh, so that other piece of aluminum that went behind the cloth door panel it's not even going to be there any longer just going straight this over top of it of course i'm going to sound dead in the back of it and insulate it that way it's not going to be getting cold in the winter and hot in the summer and on top of it, it's not going to make a bunch of noise when I'm playing my stereo system. So that's going to be the new door panels. I think they're going to turn out right. And that's probably what I'm going to go ahead and call this video is uh, custom door panels, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. But, yeah, I think they look great. So let me know what you guys think about those. Uh, if there's anything you think I may be able to do to change it up a little bit. I'm not going to put a uh, pocket on this side, on this one, because this is the one with the window and... I'm not really going to use this side much anyways so now on the other side i'm going to do the same thing a diamond plate door panel but it's going to have the pocket to put all my paperwork all that stuff in so let me know what you think comment below if you like those or not and uh get you switched around here and show you some more stuff so just the other day uh like i said i'm doing flatbed work now and i met up with this guy down in uh oh what was it can't remember the name of the town somewhere here in tennessee anyways so told this guy what i got going on drove a nice looking peterbilt man it was a plum crazy purple peterbilt it was a sweet looking truck and he told me that his uh i guess one of his old employees that he had running for him or the owner operator he had running under his authority or whatnot he uh he had some money issues i'm thinking is what he said and and uh ended up selling him eight inch stacks that was on his truck for i think like 200 bucks and he was like yeah man they'd fit your truck now the guy had a truck the, the plum crazy purple one it was a stand-up and the stacks i got didn't quite the stacks i wanted but they'll do and i like them so uh ended up he got the stacks for 200 bucks told me they were for a flat top and that they would fit my truck so uh, he said he only wanted 200 bucks for him, so I went and picked him up, up in uh, just southeast of, or no, pretty much due east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I just picked him up over the, this last week. So I'll get you flipped around here and let you see what I got. Now, like I said, this place is a mess. Got my hardwood floor over there. It's going to be going in the truck here soon because I got to get the flooring in before I start putting the walls up. But these are the stacks I got. Now, they had the skinny bands on them there there um i'm gonna put the wide bands on them it came with everything except for the hardware so i gotta figure out how to get them mounted not a big deal i don't understand why it has two of these here unless maybe he had put a handle or something on there to get up and down or in and out of the truck or whatever but that can all be cleaned up and this all comes off you know all that fogginess over there They'll clean up real well but yeah 200 bucks for a nice set of stacks man i can't believe it uh, i think i'm gonna have to change the way these pickets are probably gonna have to cut those elbows off and either twist them to where the 45 runs downward or just take them off altogether. but i'm probably gonna just twist them where they come downward now the way these are is they were fitted over another pipe and so I'm assuming that he had solid mounted stacks all the way out the uh, all the way through whatever you know what I'm saying anyways I got another elbow because the pickets that were originally on it let me get you over here and show you what I'm working with and show you why I'm thinking about running them at a 45 now the pickets that are on those, one of them's got a decent bit of rust on it. And this one's got a little bit right here, but that's all surface rust and come right off. I don't believe that's penetrated the chrome yet. So I'm going to get this one cleaned up. And like I said, 
it's not 100 percent the best but it'll do for what i'm trying to do um but anyways so the way my exhaust is run is it goes straight down and you see that that pipe down there that's my hard pipe of course this is flex and it's already ran up at a 45 degree angle and it's the same thing on the other side as well so i'm either gonna have to well the only way i can do it on this side the other side i can run it straight out but this side the only way it can be done is bends at that pipe down there is twisted up at a 45 i need to run this line the same way without having to replace that t or y or whatever you want to call it and i really don't want to so the way they had them which on those two lines you could see one of those two lines let me see if i can zoom in here one of those two lines uh where'd my finger go those two lines right there one of those two were the mounting bracket that mounted it to the cab right here which i needed to replace all this hardware anyways part of the reason why I went ahead and grabbed these stacks because all this needed to be changed before putting my interior in you know you, you gotta bolt well not not on this one the top one you've got bolts on the inside that need to be pulled out and nuts on the on the inside of the sleeper or not the sleeper but the cab that need to be pulled off before you can put it together and that's part of the reason why I wanted to put the exhaust on before I put the interior in um, don't worry about these two holes right here. I ain't concerned about them. These stacks will cover the biggest majority of them anyways. So that'll have to be fine. Used parts, I'm okay with them. It's not beyond me to use, use stuff. So anyways, what I'm thinking is, I don't figure I can get this phone set up here. That may work. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, the way they had these, it's gonna have to be where that picket stops about right in here. And if I'm gonna do it the way I'm gonna do it, it's gonna have to change up a little bit. So instead of them having this mountain point up here, where it originally was on there, I'm gonna get the bracket that connects the two pipes together and has the mount for the hardware back here to the cab to where this picket is gonna be raised up in the elbow. It's gonna be right about this area. I don't know if you can see that or not. Pretty close, but I can't hold the phone and do this. So let me put it over here. Yeah, it's not fair. See if that works. Okay, so anyways, sorry about that. Give you another visual. But the way they got this picket right here, not this one, I'm holding the small one. It runs straight down this way. And this is gonna need to go about right in here. So my 45 is gonna be right up under the sleeper right here. So it's gonna be a drastic turn with this flex tube. Probably gonna have to pick that up a little bit. But Sooner or later, once I get the mountain hardware and everything, we're going to get these mounted up. I know I'm all over the place. Like I said, sorry about that, but uh, we'll get it all figured out. But, yeah, we're going to have some 8-inch stacks on this sucker for a really, really reasonable price. So, hold on, let me get this camera flipped back around because I'm holding it backwards now. So, anyways, like I said, I got these from my buddy, uh, Greg Mitchell. And, man, I really appreciate it, dude. You did me a solid favor um another thing is of course you guys know my tanks not bad looking tanks but it's got a big nasty dent down there don't know if you can see it and then it's got this scuff right here still debating on what i'm going to do i may just go ahead and run with these tanks but the guy i'm running for now he just put tanks on a new truck or new tanks on a truck so he went with 150 gallons. These are 135s. And he gave me one of the tanks off of the truck. It's not scratched up. 
It's got a little dent right here, but that's where it mounts. Not a big deal. That'll be covered. Uh, so, yeah, for the most part, these are nice. Ain't all dented up. Definitely need to be cleaned, but we'll go figure out what I'm going to end up doing with that. I'm not 100% sure. And, let's see. Like I said, I got all the wiring ran for all the car audio and my lights and everything. It's all up under here. It was a nightmare, that's for sure. Uh, all these wires, right, oh crap, right there. That was for all the electrical in the sleeper. They didn't even have any of it hooked up. It was all cut right here where it come through the floor and up here where it come through the floor. So you can see all the splices I had to make right there. And then of course back here where you just seen. So yeah, I had to splice all that stuff together and it was a pain. Uh, I got my train horns mounted right there. These were just temporary, but these are the uh, these are the wire for my underglow. Of course, you can see I got it running right here. Got my train horns down there. Uh, believe it or not, man, I only paid like sixty bucks for these suckers on eBay. Not thinking that it was going to be super loud because, of course, I shaved the ones off the roof, so I had to have some kind of a train horn and. I just went ahead and bought those cheap suckers thinking it was going to be somewhat decent. I wasn't trying to get extremely loud like some of these guys out here with their train horns. But believe it or not, man, them suckers are really loud. I got them facing pretty much straight down to the ground. And yeah, whatever it hits the ground, it echoes right back up. And it's it's loud. Uh, my neighbors already started complaining about it. And I only hit them once. So I uh, got all that done. Had to get this wired in. This line leveler, I guess is what they call it. This is just temporary hanging here. It's not permanent. But that's what I had to use to make all my turn signals work because I changed everything to LED. They didn't want to work out right. Uh, let's see. Another thing that, that we accomplished was... don't know if you remember, but my uh, AC compressor was wobbling all over the place. So we went and got this... Uh, time joint wallowed it out and ran this nut up or this all thread up in there and of course made it to where we can make an adjustment on this uh replaced all the belts i got the hydraulic line for my uh my fan clutch so it's working now uh there's still a couple other things i need to do I'm not 100% sure I'm going to stay with this wire, run right through here, across the block. That's my power wire. Uh, I may change that up. I'm not sure. Still need to run the dual fuel line set up. And I'm going to take this PT pump off, get it down to Taylor Diesel, and have them fix that. Um, I did find out that... Here, let me get you flipped around here. So I did find out that my injectors are wrong on this truck. Uh... It's eating way too much fuel. Couldn't figure out why. Uh, I put the entirely wrong injectors in. So I'm going to take them down to uh, Taylor Diesel also. Uh, my video cut off on me, so I apologize if uh, I'm repeating myself here. And apparently it was flipped upside down. So I don't know how to fix that, but it's just going to have to play out. Anyways, so uh, yeah, I'm going to get the injectors out, take them down to Taylor Diesel, get them done, get the PT pump done. I have a little bit of performance in mind. It should be good to run up to about 650 or so horsepower. I'm only going to run about 500 with this truck, so shouldn't have any issues with that. I um, also found out that my transmission has the wrong final running gear, my overdrive. So I'm going to get it flipped around and either make a double overdrive or get the back box pulled off and get that, that gear changed out where I've got a better final drive. Still trying to figure that out, but um, got a guy up here where I live. He's going to do both the injectors, the overhead. Of course, you change the injectors, you need to redo the overhead on it. But So he's going to do the overhead and everything for me, and he's going to do the transmission work as well. Uh, and I think for the most part, that's about it. You know, it's a bunch of little small stuff with with uh, what I need to finish up before I start putting the interior back in. I got the biggest majority of all the wood, 
back over here and that corner all cut up ready for my cabinets the walls uh, of course I still need to get all the uh, holes and everything drilled into them to where where I know uh, what everything or where everything is gonna mount at uh, other than that guys I think that's pretty much a wrap for what we've accomplished on the truck and where some of it's going um, Sorry if this video was a lot of rambling on, but figured I owed you guys somewhat of an update. And uh, I don't know what my neighbors are doing over there. Anyway, I figured I owed you guys somewhat of an update. You know, it's been a while since I've posted any videos. Like I said, again, I apologize for that. It's been hectic. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Trying to get a lot of things done and just haven't really had the time to, to really pick this phone up and make some videos and, you know not right i started this thing trying to make content for you guys where you guys had something to watch and you know during this quarantine i guess that's that's uh something that you guys would really appreciate so uh if you would do me a favor like comment subscribe share hit that notification bell where when i upload a video you guys will be notified and uh do me a favor and stay inside Wear a mask when you go outside. Uh, this quarantine is serious. COVID-19 is not a joke. Uh, I'm not going to get into all these conspiracy theories I got going through my mind about it. But, yeah, it's it's serious stuff, guys. We need to take it serious. So, uh, yeah, that being said, you know, you guys have a blessed day. And I'll catch you on the next one.